Yes. We touched base on at least one event that, that you admitted to. You remember your rights, is that right? Yes. Okay. We talked about when you went in, I showed you the pictures for uh, May 21st, uh, when you went in, when you were wearing the blue shorts, yes. the pictures that I showed you, we talked about that. Um, there was a second incident that we kind of touched on when you went in later, it was, uh, I believe it was, basically, that was April 21st, right? You went in on May 12th, and this is the incident, uh, you may not have been aware of it, but um, you were being watched by uh, loss prevention. What is that? Loss prevention is like their security uh, for like shoplifting and all that stuff. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? <clears throat> um, and that's what I want to discuss with you. I want to, it sounds pretty much the same thing. You came to Walmart from Havasu. Um, you went into the store about at about one o'clock and there was a woman with a small girl in a cart do you recall that uh, situation mm -hmm. all right let's talk about that tell me about what you did that day that day yeah when you got to walmart Walking around, looking around, like you said you were in the first incident. Walking what? around. Basically. Okay. So when do you see this lady and this and this little girl? Pretty much when I were first walked in, I, I noticed those guys to, uh, some kind of a a display, I don't know what the event was, what the season was, just seasonable items. <clears throat> okay. So were they the only, that lady and that little girl, were they the only couple that were the, that were in that area at the time, or were there uh, more? I think there was other people coming in. It was right, pretty much right at the entry of the, of the store. So what grabbed your attention about them? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not real sure. Okay. You know, I just, uh, was just hanging out in that area. And, uh, Another little girl that was between five and ten in a shopping cart? Well, she was, and, uh, you know, I, <clears throat> she didn't even know I was there. And I... You were by the beach towels, right? I'm sorry? You were by the beach towels? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Remember it now? Yeah, I do remember okay. The, okay. the beach towels. And, um... What was, uh... What is that security business for? Or, or, What's this? Or, or do they think I shoplifted or something? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. They recognized you from the first time that you came in. Oh, I see. And uh, did what you did when you touched yourself in front of that little girl, um, and then Grandma saw you in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Okay, they recognized you from that incident. Oh. So when you came in this time, they saw you, and they watched you. Oh, I see. Okay. And um, so you're standing, and they watched you, and they said they saw you standing by the towels watching this little girl and her mom. What were you doing? Well, I was just walking around. I wasn't just standing there. Okay, well, were you doing anything to yourself while you're no, watching this? No, it was right there. Michael. No, I wouldn't touch myself thinking that there was anybody around watching. Michael, we already went over the first incident. You were pl clearly doing that on, on film. You saw people doing it, or you, people saw you doing it the first time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
Now you're saying you didn't do it? I'm, I'm, I'm saying that I, I probably did, but I, I, you know, if there's somebody just standing there, I'm not going to be fondling myself. You gotta be kidding me. I, I just got done talking to you in, in, uh, in our last interview where you were following this little girl around, touching yourself. And you were so focused in on her, you couldn't even see the grandmother who was watching you do it. You remember that part of the conversation? I guess I do the conversation. I don't remember the incident. I mean, I just don't remember. It. Is it fair to say that you get tunnel vision when, when this stuff is going on? I imagine. Because you didn't see anybody around you watching you, but... You also weren't aware that they have video surveillance inside of well, Walmart? Well, yes, I am. And I guess I should, well, I'll tell you what, I, I just, uh, that You was just get tunnel vision, right? You're seeing one thing and one thing only, and you forget about everything else well, that's I going ask, on. I you know, because that was a pretty stupid thing to do right in front of video cameras for crying out loud. Do you have children, Michael? Got a daughter, don't you? How do you know that? I told you, Michael, we don't uh, we don't talk to anybody without doing our homework. Uh -huh. You got a daughter that's about what forty two, isn't she? That that could be right. Mm -hmm. It is. <clears throat> what would you say if uh, I told you that we talked to Judy up in Boise? Oh no. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Uh, it's just that she's just going to make. Uh, you know, things miserable for me. You haven't been married to her for 10 years. How could she make things miserable for well, her? Well, you know, I mean, that's all she needs is something to hear something like this. And, and uh, you know, that's not going to make my life go too well. For sure. What do you think she would tell us? Oh, I don't think she told me. I can't imagine because uh, we had a good relationship. Healthy relationship, basically. Why did it end? Huh? Why did it end? Well, she uh, claimed that uh, I was a workaholic and that I didn't know how to have fun. And she became a born again Christian and she just carried it uh, uh, to an extreme. And uh, so eventually, uh, you know, she had to go her way and I had to go mine. Your fascination with prepubescent girls didn't uh, have anything to do with the now, she demise of the relationship? Now, she used about, about uh, having an eye for a pretty girl walking by. A pretty six-year-old or? A what? A pretty six-year-old girl or? No. Did you ever share that, uh, those fantasies with your wife? No. <clears throat> no. Did you ever share any of that with your daughter? <clears throat> you know, I, I, Judy might have said something about my daughter. I've told her what I know about my daughter. My daughter and I uh, don't know each other. We never have. And uh, as far as my daughter knows, I don't even exist. She thinks her father is uh, uh, somebody else. And, and uh, is Judy not your daughter's mother? No. No. Judy had. Uh, she had four kids. The oldest one that actually her mother raised was living on the streets of uh, Reno, Nevada, and uh, he was an Aryan Nation gang leader, and he got into a quite a bit of trouble and spent quite a few years in prison down there. Did you live up in the uh, Reno area when Judy lived up there or not? Anyhow, she asked me 
one day if I wanted to go save a life. And I said, sure. So we went to Reno, picked Skip up in Reno, and drove him back to my ranch. And How many yeah, times have you gone to the Walmart in Lake Havasu and done this same thing? No. No? No. no. Okay, so you just pick our fair city. Why here? Why Bullhead? I was just, uh, you know, get get out of town for a while, and it's a nice roll up here, and, uh, you know, I can go over to Laughlin, to the, uh, to the outlet center. You ever do any of this, uh, any of those clothing stores over there? I know they got a kid clothing store over yeah. there. Just Walmart here? Or is there any I, other I, place? I don't, uh, I, I, I behave. 99% of the time. Well, it's that other 1% no, that's going to put you in prison. In prison? Go ahead and share with him, detective. Looking at uh, seven felony counts of sexual indecency in public. Public sexual indecency. Seven? Account for everybody that, uh, that can be identified <coughs> around at the time that you were doing this stuff. We got plenty of names. Plenty of people who saw you, plenty of people who chose you from, picked you out of uh, lineups. The woman and her child that were in the seasonal item, that you were standing there near the beach towels, fondling yourself, those are two victims. The woman and her three-year-old child in the dairy aisle, those are two more victims. The old lady and her uh, granddaughter, those are two more victims. And then there's the loss prevention clerk who actually saw you with his own eyes and then later on video and saw the whole act. So this means I, I'm gonna probably go to prison now. Huh? You know what? Um, Have you ever done anything? I'll, I'll do anything I can do to put you in prison. I'll tell you that right now because you have a something that's not right with you for a grown man to sit and say that he fantasizes about six-year-olds, six to 10-year-olds, that's um, sexually deviant behavior. And after we interviewed the 11-year-old victim, again this morning, another interview with her, and she told me and Detective English, that she is afraid of you, that she has nightmares about you, and she was afraid that you were gonna grab her and do God knows what to her. Um, you know what, my heart goes out to these victims. And unfortunately, and maybe I'm calloused, but my heart does not go out to you because when I have a three-year-old child telling me about the bad man, three-year-old child shouldn't know about bad men right now and uh, you obviously put yourself in this position and so it's uh it's my goal even though this is detective english's case it, it, it's my goal to to make sure that you do go to prison and, and to hopefully make you register as a sex offender because i think that we grabbed you at the tip of the iceberg you were Working your way up to do one more step bad away oh, from no. touching a child. No, I would. I, when you sit and fantasize about six-year-old no, female children, I, that is. I don't sit. Sexually fantasize. deviant behavior. You told us thirty to forty times you've done this, over, and I know over, that over my whole life. For thirty years is how long you said you've right. been fantasizing, and so I can you tell you, it. by thirty or forty times. You've minimized it at least half. So, Michael, I, you know what? I I try and have compassion for people that have problems. I, I really do. You know what? I can understand somebody that murders somebody else. I can't understand a grown 65-year-old man fantasizing about a six-year-old child. That just does not register with me. I, I don't understand it. I can't understand it, and uh, you said it wasn't the end, end of the world. It, well, it, Michael, end of the world for me. Well, Michael, listen. You know, it's not just the fact that you're fantasizing about this stuff. I mean, that part's bad in itself, but it's the fact that 
you know, I've discussed with you the progression of this whole thing. You've progressed to the point where you've been acting on it for the last 30 years. You have. Oh, you admittedly say you have. It's getting. Uh, I don't know where in your less, mind. And less, and, so we should. For the last 11 months, uh, I've, I had two, two days. So do you think a guy who does what you do should be able to just wander around in society, walk around no, in Walmart? I think, I, you know, I, I, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. I do you have any tattoos or anything on your arms or upper body? No. Why do you always wear a long sleeve shirt? Skin cancer. You don't worry about skin cancer on your legs? Uh, no. Oh, no, I worked for 35 years out in, in the in the. Lab. And obviously, you don't worry about skin cancer on your penis because you have that coming out of your shorts, right? So it's just on your arms. Oh, man. Don't tell me to come on. You know, you're the one that's running around Walmart with your penis hanging out of your shorts. You know, don't. Um... And the 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 thing that gets me about this, Michael, is is you know it's wrong, but yet you continue to do it. And even though you say in your mind, and all you've been doing with us this whole time is minimizing everything. You've been trying to make everything so small when you know it's not. Well, the, the deal is, is, I've been here 13 months and I had two days that you witnessed and that... And in two days you racked up seven felony counts. Oh, God. So, you know what? You can't minimize this and put it on everybody else because I'm going to tell you what. A six-year-old girl or a three-year-old girl does not flaunt themselves in front of you. This 11-year-old girl that you followed around, that you were within eight feet of, picking up clothes when she turned around and looked at you, and she saw you fondling your penis on multiple occasions in one short trip to Walmart for her and you know what she doesn't want to go back she doesn't want to go back and I, I, you told him that he's not welcome back right no yeah but I'm sure he, yeah. he, he knows by now you're not you're no, gonna sure you trespass yeah, from Walmart well. and that probably means every Walmart on the face of this planet because that's usually how it works and you know what honestly you we be... don't even want you back in Bullhead City okay. you know what stay in like Havasu if, if you well, gotta go show your penis I to people you then, then you know what do it at home don't bring that kind of activity here to our city. Okay, we pride ourselves in keeping this city a safe city. Yeah. And you know what? You're bringing badness to our city. Okay. Because a three-year-old told us that a bad man was here. So. All right, Michael. So seven counts. Seven class count. five felonies. Seven class five. And what, how, how long in prison would that be? That's, uh, I couldn't tell you off the, off the top of my head. Are they going to uh, let me go home before? Or? Um, I don't know. That's up to the judge. You'll see, you'll go over the hill, you'll be booked in the Kingman Jail, County Jail, and you'll be held um, until at least the morning. You'll see a judge. Oh, um, you mean uh, I'm not going to stay here tonight? No, this isn't a holding. This is only a temporary holding facility. It's a processing facility. What, how am I going to get my car? You'll or? go back up to, well, you can either leave it locked up in the uh, in the uh, parking lot, which I don't know when you're going to get out. And if it sits there for so long, eventually it's going to be towed. So um, either that or you can find somebody who can come and get it for you. Oh, what about getting, I, I feel like uh, if I'm going to have any kind of chance of, of life at, uh, at all, I'm going to have to have a lawyer. If you want a lawyer, there's phones in there, there's phone books, you can call an attorney. It's been your option this whole time. So, you know, uh, they will provide free counsel for you. Um, if you can't afford it, I mean, that was explained to you in your Miranda rights. But Boy, that's where we're at. I mean, I can't believe that. You just got to keep it in your pants, Michael. That's all. You got to control yourself. Yeah. We all right, said it was the end of the world, and it is. Well, I mean, believe it or not, there's even worse out there. Here, take that and give that to uh, Maxine. Max.